Good morning and thank you for joining us. Our first reading today comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. 
The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 25. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going to astray like sheep. But now you have returned to the shepherd and your guardian of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for the shepherd and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run away because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God and Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Decisions, decisions. Life is full of decisions. You may have heard that the decisions we make or our behavior largely make us who we are. How do we make them in a Christian manner? We Christians believe that by Jesus' resurrection on Easter, Christ has given us new life. So, how does this affect the way you make decisions? Our lessons this Sunday of the Good Shepherd give, gives us some idea of an answer to these questions. But first, I have to tell you that I have noticed a pattern in the way we proceed in making decisions. 
we tend to fall back into our old comfortable ways of doing things and we start relying on our instincts. Is that not how you and I usually make our decisions? Some people, when it comes time to make a decision, the first thing they think about is growth and profit. Some of us have the instincts of promoting freedom and liberation. Some say, live for today. Let the future take care of itself. Still others have the instinct to say, we have always done it that way, so why change the system? And finally, we have some politicians that have the instinct that says, I do not want to decide anything that will hurt my good name. That whatever I decide must be in the interest of retaining control. Are any of us really making Christian decisions in the way we are living our lives? Have we lost our way? Have we been throwing away the abundant life that Jesus promises us in our gospel today? How can we get it back? Well, take heart. Even in our sin, God loves us. Maybe the gift of abundant life has not been informing us in the way we are living. Jesus calls himself the gate or entrance for the sheep, the good shepherd. He is the one who wants to lead you and me to point us to the abundant life. Jesus, the good shepherd, is putting his claim on you and me to be his sheep. But we often do things the way we like it, the way it has always been done, or the business-like way or whatever keeps people happy, but not what is always best for their own well-being and safety. We have all been straying like sheep, doing it the way that we like it, just like sheep. But are we living as Jesus' sheep? Are you letting him be your good shepherd? Is he guiding you, giving you direction. The promise of today's gospel is that if you let Jesus lead, life will be less fearful. It will be more peace-filled and it will be perhaps even happier. We have already been given that abundant new life with Jesus' resurrection. It is ours when we embrace Jesus in faith. The next time that you have a decision to make, give it some thought. Give Jesus the chance to lead you. How does Jesus want to lead you? I believe he would answer something like the words that Martin Luther once said in a sermon on the Good Shepherd. He said, Therefore, Jesus says, Joyfully abide with me and let none other rule in your conscience. Listen only to me, who speak and by deeds prove this comforting word that I will not drive, trouble, or burden you like Moses and the others, but will most lovingly, lovingly lead and guide, protect, and help you. 
Will you let Jesus guide you in your decisions? Amen.
pray that lands and waters be renewed, that animals and plants enjoy safe growth, that rain and soil nurture the fields, that drought and floods in Yemen be averted and locusts of Kenya cease their frenzy. O God, steadfast gardener of the earth, restore our life. For the nations of the world, we pray that heads of state and legislators cooperate for the good of all, that medical experts be heeded, that government money serve the nation's greatest needs. O oh God, fearless peacemaker of the nations, restore our life. For a world so economically divided, we pray that the millions of those unemployed be given food and shelter now and jobs in the future, that children find a fruitful means of education, that refugees be safeguarded from violence and prejudice, that inspired by the early Christians, those who have means become ever more generous to those who endure great want. O oh God, just protector of the poor, restore our life. For all in need we pray that those afflicted with the coronavirus be cared for, that the sick be healed, that those in despair find hope, that those who are lonely be comforted, that medical workers be safeguarded, that those we name in our hearts receive the best possible care. O oh God, mighty healer of the sick, restore our life. For our own desires we pray that like the shepherds, Rachel and David, each tending their father's flocks, we will be blessed for the fulfilling for fulfilling our task, and that you hear the cries of our hearts. O oh God, tender shepherd of each of us, restore our life. We praise you for those who have died in the faith. We pray that at our end, as sheep of your own fold, as lambs of your own flock, we will be gathered into your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. O oh God, gateway to life, restore our life. Into your everlasting arms we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your care for us through Jesus Christ, our guardian and friend. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless us now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay connected with one another. God be with you.
Oh